Thank you, Van Um Before I get into the um, specific case study here, I'm representing, uh, I'm doing this on behalf of um, one of our customers who implemented a uh, optimization, an AI-driven or machine learning-driven optimization system, um, one of the largest gold mining companies in the world, and one of the largest gold mines in Nevada. Um, so I'll go through that case study to give you a flavor of how machine learning is being applied and can be applied in the real world. So before I start, um, I know uh, uh, I know Alan and I went through quite a few of uh, a preview uh, slides on what machine learning is, uh, what supervised and unsupervised learning and all that. I want to bring it down to a very simple level. So at the end of it, it is all math and stats. So I don't know how many of you uh, uh, are familiar with type one and type two errors and false positives and false negatives from your engineering school and uh, uh, or even business school days, right? So uh, there's a, an interesting anecdote here. So there is uh, a discussion around machine learning algorithms to detect terrorists uh, among uh, people who enter an airport. Um, and if I tagged every person as not a terrorist, the accuracy of that algorithm is 99.9999%. Now, I cannot sell that to anybody as a solution because that's the, it is accurate. Uh, having said that, in machine learning, what is important is what we call as precision and recall. Recall and precision are the things that we worry about in choosing algorithms or choosing uh, what techniques you use in whether it is optimization or anomaly detection. So when I go through this, keep that in mind. Um, the, the big challenge in uh, what I've seen in machine learning so far as a practitioner, as an implementer is, uh, obviously data is a challenge, but assume you have the data, then it is tying the domain to the, uh, uh, sorry, tying the science to the domain problem. So you need people who understand at least a little bit of the science and enough of the domain uh, to be able to apply this problem. And the third one is what I, what I called as a precision versus recall, or precision and recall problem. And you can pick algorithms that give you a lot of, uh, will be high precision, but the recall might be low. And I, I'll define what recall and precision is. Uh, it is the, fall, the notion of false positives and false negatives, and uh, we can get into that. So as I go through this, uh, I have about 20 minutes, is that? Oh, if, Okay, so let me start. So this particular use case is one of using um, machine learning to do a milling circuit, a grinding circuit in a, uh, in a mine, in a gold mine, and optimizing the grinding circuit. So let me, which is, okay. So, the goal production and throughput. So uh, I'll define what a what a milling circuit, uh, what a mining uh, complete operations look like. Essentially, um, it's one of the largest, like I said, one of the largest uh, mine mines in uh, North America, and one of the top five uh, mines in the world, uh, which produce about um, a million uh, ounces of gold. Um, so you can do the math based on gold prices, what the revenues are coming out of that minus, et cetera. And you have to process about 6,000 to 7,000 tons of ore to generate an ounce of gold. So think about it. You're processing huge amount of material through a complete set of operational processes to get a few ounces of gold at the end. Um, any, um, any kind of optimization you can do in throughput can have significant impact on your uh, downstream revenue. Um, one of the, um, these equipment and uh, these operations are, uh, have been around for a long time. So these are equipment don't get replaced very often. These are, when I get into the, um, uh, the type of equipment here, you'll, uh, uh, you'll get a sense of that. Um, 
So the to stay, uh, the situation was um, to improve the th throughput and yield um, uh, from this mining operations. Now there's a lot of dependencies on how much throughput that you can uh, drive through these mi um, these mining operations. It's depend on ore qu ore quality, um, the the granularity of the ore, um, the uh, the temperatures, the, there's a whole bunch of, I'll, when I walk through the variables, it is clear that 30, 40 uh, variables that you have to consider in optimizing the operations. The traditional approach was using um, advanced process control uh, with a model uh, MPC, uh, model predictive controller, uh, to do uh, settings on these uh, milling operations. Uh, what we, um, the company was able to do with machine learning was to increase the throughput by a percentage, and that's pretty big deal. Um, it's in the tens of millions in terms of revenue for them. So this kind of a bird's eye view of the process you have. With, these are open pit mines. You bring in the ore, uh, crush them, uh, create a pile, and then uh, there is a grinding circuit. The grinding circuit has two big operations, a sag mill and a ball mill. And a sag mill is, uh, has also a lot of large metal balls um, and it rotates and then uh, a combination of the balls crushing against the ore, ore and the gravity is what kind of crushes it from about uh, nine inches, eight to nine inches in diameter all the way to 150 microns uh, through these two steps. So you have the sag mill, and then the ore is then taken into the ball mill, and it is purely crushed with the, the balls rotating in that. Now, as I said, the traditional operations of, you have operators who are looking at screens, uh, you have a control center with operators looking at the screens, and they are looking at conditions and adjusting uh, the thresholds of uh, how much um, uh, how much throughput can, uh, how many tonnage can go through this. And the feed is fed in based on what the operators control. Um, now the model predictive controller is the one which is adjusting uh, the variables in there, whether uh, it is the motor current um, or um, the changeable variables in this thing. So the opportunity here is to maximize the mill throughput and the challenges are the variability in ore properties, the process uncertainties, and the operator to operator variability. Now, um, these operators have been working at the mines for decades, uh, some even 50 years, um, started when they were right out of um, uh, high school or even community college and were trained to operate these machines. And then um, over a period of time, they have kind of, they have, uh, back off the envelope uh, approaches, they have uh, uh, things that they have learned, learned over time. So they make adjustments to uh, these variables based on what they know, uh, they've known from the experience as well as looking at some of the variables on the screen. Now, as you know, it's very hard for a human being, however smart they are, to look at 20 or 30 variables, know the interactions between them, know what is optimal uh, when you change three of them uh, in a certain direction, et cetera, et cetera. So, so it's, not a, it's not something an operator can do. So, so they use simple heuristic to uh, adjust. Uh, and uh, what the company w had noticed and we had noticed was that they were always operating in a safe zone. So think about a mill like your washing machine. Um, if you want to get the maximum throughput out of your a washing machine, you could load it with uh, as much clothes as possible, but after a certain threshold, um, the machine either breaks, your clothes are not clean, and all of that. And the milling is a similar process. You can increase the throughput, uh, you can increase the amount of feed that goes through, but after a certain stage, uh, depending on the rest of the variables, it kind of uh, clogs, it uh, chokes, uh, all of that. So to be, um, so traditionally, the operators have been operating it in very safe zones because they have only so much ability to know how much they can push it. Uh, so they, they take the conserv conservative approach. What machine learning was able to do is, so the, the good news is like the, 
advanced process controller, the MPC worked in the sense that it reduces reduce the process variability. Now, but it reduced the process variability, but it still um, operated within very safe zones. Uh, what the machine learning alg algorithm and the continuous learning was able to do is push the uh, limits of how much uh, feed can be uh, pushed through the, this thing to the right or increase the amount of feed that can, uh, um, that can go through this process. And this kind of a, uh, a kind of a block diagram view of what, how it works. Um, the, the traditional approach, uh, the APC objective was um, using a certain constraint, maximize the throughput, and then the, um, the APC worked um, uh, to set the variables to maximize the throughput. But the challenges were the multiple interacting constraints across the mill circuit, not at each individual mill, but across the mill circuit, there were interaction constra uh, constraints. And then you had reactive management. Uh, operators had to react to the changes in ore properties. Um, now, there are other opportunities in this mine, like the ore properties were determined based on a lab test. So there was a lag in when the, uh, the lab test results came out. Now, you could use video camera-based approaches. We are thinking of a whole bunch of approaches to improve how those ore properties can be characterized even without a lab test. So you can uh, get ahead of the curve here. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, APC op operated or automated the optimizer. The limits were set by the operator. Uh, so, the operator would set the limits and then let the APC operate within those limits. So, that's how uh, this was being run. What the machine learning, the AI-driven APC was, AI would provide the guidance to operators to set the min and max. Because now you're providing an advisory, you're not directly controlling it, you're providing an advisory today, say what's the min and max, and that naturally pushed the min and max to the right-hand side and increased the throughput. <clears throat> so this is uh, kind of the uh, a cognitive learning-based approach. We used an algorithm um, called a, um, LSTM, autoencoder-based algorithm, which can take in a large number of variables and do um, a predictive uh, modeling of the, uh, predictive optimization of the, um, the circuit. Um, the, the goal here, from a, from a change management perspective, uh, the idea here was to provide the data, uh, the advisory and the corresponding data visualization. Because one of the things you have to be, uh, those of you who probably already know about this because you're uh, in the middle of your machine learning projects is, uh, you don't want to put a black box algorithm and say, okay, these are your predictive results. And then, uh, first of all, you're not going to get acceptance out of very experienced uh, practitioners. And the second thing is, um, they wouldn't know why uh, it is recommending a certain thing. So the explainability, when you select algorithms, one of the things is for uh, industrial applications, the explainability of those algorithms need to be there. Now, those algorithms can be explained uh, through data visualization, um, through uh, other approaches, other uh, kind of text-based um, uh, explanations, et cetera. And we approach it to data visualization. So uh, when it shows a certain results. It will show which variables have moved and which have moved in certain direction and what the envelope is so that over a period of time, the operators have a good feel for, okay, why is it um, uh, recommending that I push the limits forward? <clears throat> so I think there's a lot of technical details here um, uh, around what was done um, in um, kind of, setting the, uh, I think I have a video here, but I don't think I'm able to play that video. Um, the, <clears throat> it essentially dynamically adjusts constraints uh, and then let the model predictive controller uh, to run the, uh, run the model. Yeah, it, it is. So essentially uh, the ability to kind of move 
um, the uh, throughput to a higher level because um, if you see on the left hand side, um, when they were operating at a very safe zone and as soon as they run into an issue, they will lower uh, the, the threshold so that the throughput drops drastically. Now, the algorithm was able to tell them that there is no need to lower this or you could even keep it higher uh, because this was a temporary, um, uh, uh, temporary issue and uh, in effect drove the throughput to a much higher value. <clears throat> so a little bit about the, um, algor um, the approach. Um, you essentially are creating a, uh, I think digital twin is used very kind of uh, uh, very widely these days. Um, a dynamical, uh, dynamically constructed digital twin, right? Um, and we use a recurrent neural network um, and be able to optimize the, the production, uh, uh, optimize the throughput on this. <clears throat> and there's a lot of literature published around LSTM, auto and Gorda models, and recurrent neural nets uh, that, uh, that's available uh, online. <clears throat> so the annual revenue impact of this was about five million per mine, and uh, the reduction in operator-induced variability. Uh, you had an advisory system that allowed you to uh, kind of rely on uh, to optimize the production. Um, so I don't have a slide on the challenges. Uh, I can go through some of them. So data, like I said, data integration was a challenge. Uh, we had to start with what was already available uh, through historians. Uh, a lot of data being collected in uh, data historians for other reasons, for analytics and all of that. So the machine learning models used time series data that was collected in historians. Additional sensors had to be put in at a later stage in the project to get the model much, uh, much more kind of fine-tuned. Um, the second challenge, like I said, was uh, you cannot do this from a lab. You have to really go into the mine and sit with the operators and walk them through the results and educate them on this thing. So there is a change management uh, in any of these machine learning approaches, if you want to really implement machine learning in factory floors or mines or uh, oil fields or um, all of that, you'll have to take a, uh, you'll have to account for change management that is needed uh, for folks to adopt uh, the solution. Uh, then it is another one is sustaining the solution. Any machine learning model, uh, depending on how drastic the conditions vary, uh, can have something called model drift. And you have to have uh, some sort of a support mechanism to say, okay, the model has drifted. We need to relearn from uh, the new set of data, historical data, but the new set of data uh, and retweak the, the models, depending on what kind of uh, models you're using. So all of them have to be taken into consideration uh, from if you're implementing a solution like this. So that's, that's all I had.